The House That Sailed Away, written by Pat Hutchins. Chapter One, The House That Sailed Away. It had rained every day since Granny arrived in London. Every single day. Not the nice, fat sort of rain that makes gentle plopping noises on your rain hat, or umbrella if you happen to have one, which Granny hadn't, as she'd left it on the overnight bus from Swansea. But the nasty, thin sort of rain that runs down your nose and the tops of your Wellington boots and makes your hair stick out all over the place, especially if it's curly, like Granny's was. In fact, it was the sort of weather you wouldn't turn a dog out in, if you like dogs, that is, which Granny didn't anyway. Granny sighed deeply as she gazed out of the window. Just think, she said gloomily, if I hadn't done my ankle in at the over 60s do, I would be visiting strange new places on the Cook's Coach and Paddle Boat Mystery Tour instead of sitting here staring at this awful rain. She handed a curler to Mother, who was trying to set Granny's hair, which Father said stuck up like steel wool after Mother had cleaned the inside of the oven with it. And if daft Betty from the shop hadn't shoved, hadn't shoved half a box of soap flakes all over the dance floor, I wouldn't have slipped in the first place. Or if she'd kept off the vicar's homemade wine, Father murmured. Granny ignored him. I mean to say, I know the floor, she'd have a nice slip to it, but she wouldn't listen when I told her you don't heap soap flakes on it like it was French chalk. She shook her head and sighed again. Mind you, if she'd ordered another packet of French chalk in the first place, like I told her to, she wouldn't have had to use the soap flakes. It'll give it a good slip, she said. Aye, I'll say it gave it a good slip. When Elsie Bruce knocked Bob Bruce's pint of ale out of his hand during the conga, there were soap suds everywhere. We all went down like nine pins. And as I'd just been up to collect my raffle prize, I was right at the end. Well, you can imagine, Bob Bruce is no lightweight, and Elsie's put on a fair bit of weight since you saw her last, and then there was Fat Ginger and Daft Betty. She paused for breath. Yes, I wonder I wasn't killed. Father grinned and opened his mouth to speak, but Mother frowned at him and he shut it again. And to think, she added bitterly, after I'd won two tickets for the mystery tour. Fancy having to give them away. And when my friend Kitty had arranged two weeks off to come with me as well. I thought you'd swap them, said Father. Ah, but it's not the same, is it, said Grandma? Swapping first for second. Still, I couldn't very well go on a mystery tour with my ankle all done up in plaster. So I let Elsie and Bob Bruce have my tickets, and they insisted I had their prize instead. What was the second prize, Granny? asked Morgan, who was sitting at the window watching the rain. Two bottles, said Granny. Aha, Father winked at Morgan. But I gave one of them back for them to take in case the journey upset their stomachs. Tonic wine, she explained to Mother, who had finished setting Granny's hair and was trying to rescue Tail Cat from the baby, who had the cat's head stuck firmly under his arm while he tried to bite the threshing tail as it thumped backwards and forwards past his face. Grandma suddenly said, Granny, Granny suddenly starts sat bolt upward in her chair. Oh, it's funny, you know, she said, talking of upset stomachs. Mine feels most peculiar. She patted it. She patted her stomach. Just like it did the time I took our Dennis on a fishing boat in Whitby on his tenth birthday. She patted her stomach again. Real wheezy like. I'll get you a bottle of tonic wine, said Morgan, disappearing downstairs into the kitchen. Very peculiar, said Granny, shaking her head. Very, Father agreed. Nine, shouted Mother. What? said Father, jumping up nervously. Nine, Mother repeated. 
Nine what? said Granny. Nine years old, said Mother. Nine years old what? demanded Father. Dennis was, said Mother. He wasn't ten, he was nine. And he wasn't him anyway, it was me. Father took a deep breath. All right, he said slowly. It was you where? On the fishing boat in Whitby, of course, said Mother brightly. Oh, said Father wearily, putting his earphones on to listen to a record. How strange, murmured Mother, looking down at the baby, who had started sliding slowly from one side of the room to the other. I know this will sound silly, but the house seems to be... She paused and picked up the baby as he slid by. Rocking, she finished. At that moment, Morgan burst into the room. Dad, Dad, he shouted, quick, downstairs, it's fantastic. What, said Father, who couldn't really hear as, as he was listening to a record of steam trains leaving King's Cross Station. The water, yelled Morgan. So loudly, he frightened Tailcat, who shot up in the air and started leaping around the room with his ears flat against his head and his fur standing on end. What on earth is happening, said Father, as Tailcat landed on his shoulders, knocking his earphones off. Downstairs, shouted Morgan, hopping from one foot to the other. The water, come and see. The water where? What water where? said Mother, trying to get up from her chair. But the house seemed to be swaying so violently she sat down again. Granny was clinging tightly to the sides of her armchair, looking very peaky. Father jumped up quickly and ran downstairs after Morgan. Well, said Mother, hanging onto Granny's chair, which had started moving across the floor with one hand and to the baby who was trying to grab Tail Cat every time he leaped past with the other. He might have told us what water was where and why. Suddenly there was a tremendous cracking noise and Granny's chair slipped out of Mother's grip and rolled towards the window where it stuck, pinning Granny against the settee. Good heavens, she Granny, as she looked out of the window. The house shuddered and Granny's chair rolled back again. I don't believe it, whispered Granny faintly as she slid past Mother's chair. Don't believe what? asked Mother, clinging to the table and trying to free Tailcat from the baby who was wrestling with him. We're only floating down Willow Road, snapped Granny, that's all. Oh dear, said Mother, what will the neighbours think? I wish I'd stayed in Swansea, said Granny, as the, her as the house lurched again, sending her chair rattling back across the room. It's incredible, shouted Father, bursting into the room. We're actually moving. The water is over the basement windows and nearly at the front door. He rushed over to the window. Come and have a look. Morgan ran behind him. There's Miss Johnson, he shouted. She looks a bit surprised. He waved out of the window. I'd look surprised too, snapped Granny, if my next door neighbour's house sailed away, taking my end wall with it. Oh dear, said Mother. Poor Miss Johnson. It must be a bit draughty for her, especially with all this rain. Poor Miss Johnson, snorted Granny. What about me? i come down to London because I couldn't go on a mystery tour, thinking I'd have a nice quiet week to rest of my ankle and what happens. I leave my umbrella on the bus, it rains every single day, spoiling my hairdo, which I had done especially, and to top it all, the house floats away, upsetting my stomach, and I never did get the wine I was promised. I'm sorry, Granny, said Morgan excitedly, I forgot, I'll go and get it now. It's smashing in the kitchen with the water slapping at the window and all the plants floating about in it. My plants, wailed Mother handing the baby to Granny and rushing to the window. Isn't it fantastic, said Father, opening the window so Mother could see better. Mother couldn't believe her eyes. The neighbours across the road were hanging out of their bedroom windows, waving and shouting. And on the smaller houses, a bit farther down the hill, the water was halfway up the front door, 
and people were climbing onto the roofs holding umbrellas and newspapers over their heads and staring in astonishment at them. The brown children were hanging out of their attic window, shouting and cheering and reaching out to try and touch the walls of the house as it, sid as it slid slowly by them. Young Joseph started to cry and tried to clamber onto the roof saying he wanted to go with Morgan, but his mother dragged him back in again. Miss Johnson looked as if she'd turned to stone as she gazed at them through her lace curtains, with the rain beating against her as it blew in where the wall used to be. The few people who had been walking their dogs on the heath were perched on the top branches of trees, looking very forlorn, with their dogs beside them. All the cars that had been parked on Willow Road were floating around like fish, and Father was pleased he'd taken the Range Rover into the garage to have the windscreen wipers fixed. My poor plants, said Mother sadly, as she saw her favourite geranium bobbing up and down in the water. Still, she added, brightening up a bit, at least they'll have plenty of water while we're away. Granny cheered up quite a lot too after her glass of tonic wine and brought the baby to have a look out of the window while Morgan went upstairs to the bedroom for a better view. Even Tailcat had calmed down and jumped onto the window ledge to have a sniff around, but changed his mind when he saw the baby and decided to curl up in Granny's seat and go to sleep instead. The house nearly stuck as it turned the corner at Willoughby Road, but Father and Morgan managed to push against the wall of the corner house with a broom and mop until it was free and off they sailed into Hampstead High Street. The High Street was cluttered with boxes of food that had floated out of the supermarket and bobbed against the open window of the house, until Granny decided they ought to take extra provisions with them and leaned out and fished them in, right in front of the police station too, although the policemen were much too busy clinging to the roof and trying to keep dry to care. Soon they were gathering speed, and the houses with the people on the roof sped by as they sailed down the hill towards Camden Town. Isn't this exhilarating? shouted Father, hanging out of the window. Well, said Mother uncertainly, I suppose we always did want a sailing holiday, but I don't know what Morgan's teacher will say on Monday when he's not at school. Hooray! shouted Morgan, who had heard her from the bedroom window. No more school! And Mother is getting her mystery tour after all, she added. So that's not so bad. But there's only one thing that's bothering me. What's that, dear? asked Father, really enjoying himself now, as the house slipped into Camden Lock and floated along into Regent's Park Canal. We forgot to cancel the milk, said Mother. Oh well, said Granny cheerfully, pouring herself another glass of wine. Worse things happen at sea. A thick mist was forming as they drifted past the zoo and Paddington Basin. By the time they had reached Brentford, the fog was so dense it was impossible to see anything at all. I hope they don't, sighed Mother. Don't what? said Father. Happen, said Mother. Father closed his eyes for a moment. You hope what won't happen? Worse things, said Mother. Where? said Father slowly. At sea, of course, 